we come from one common set of kupuna or ancestors. And then as we sailed across the vast Pacific and inhabited our islands and, and created these intimate place-based relationships and, and stories and myths around it, it turns out you're going to make decisions that we would say are more sustainable in the long run. So if our kupuna figured out how to survive, and not just survive, but thrive for centuries in the most remote islands on the planet, <laughs> there's something to be gained there if we think about you know, this term sustainability really being about people and, and planet thriving and surviving into the future. My area of focus and study is principally uh, inspired by the Aina. It's often translated, Aina is translated as land. The literal meaning is that which feeds. So that's a pretty good indicator in terms of how we might see land differently. I was born and grew up in Hawaii and have done most of my research there since 1984 and have worked to bring together strains of understanding in my research over that time. I think there are features of Pacific indigenous societies that lead them towards sustainability. The first is that they're island societies and so people could see when they were using up the land, using up the resources, and they could see that what was left was all there was or ever would be. When we think about island earth, we understand today, because of the things that have brought us to climate crisis, the interconnectivity of the whole earth, earth as a system. Not earth as, as separate, distinct continents that, that don't have <laughs> impacts on each other. I mean, we all, we all understand that very acutely today. Genealogy was really important in those societies. And so that enforces a long-term perspective. People see themselves as links in a chain that reaches far back into the past and far forward into the future. Beyond sustainability is, is kinship, you know, between people and place. So I think even from a scientific standpoint, it's okay to play in this space and say that having kinship relationships with our natural world, with our resources, what many indigenous people call around the world, Mother Earth, and applying those kinship relationships when we make decisions about our social systems, our economic systems, um, our systems of governance, can have radically different outcomes than, than the ones that we've inherited today. An important feature of the book is to draw on both science as it's conventionally understood and indigenous understanding of the world and try to bring them together. Not integrate them because I don't think they can or should be integrated. I think that the right pathway is for them to look at the world together and learn from each other's insights about how the world works. That's the confluence we're seeking. Many of these, these principles are embedded, you know, at least from my perspective, in, in our ancestral ideals, in, in aloha aina, in love for that which feeds. Even if the academy was able to solve for climate crisis and sustainability without engaging indigenous systems, there would be so much that's lost. I just hope this book can, can help to advocate for recognizing our ancestral systems as needed and, and viable solutions for the multiple crises that we face today. Mm -hmm.